Hello! Today we've got Steve Barry checking out some coupes. Or coupes. Enjoy! The Triumph Stag and the MGB. Brit classics rediscovered by the Stringback Driving Gloves Brigade in the 80s. But 10 years on, a new generation craves cleaner, crisper, more continental lines. Welcome to the cravat-wearing world of 70s Suave. Stodgy saloons were the stock in trade of the likes of Fiat and Peugeot, and to a lesser extent, Lancia. But with a wave of Pininfarina's magic wand, all three were transformed into rakish two-door coupes, reeking of high karate cool. Now, they might not be the most obvious classic choice, because they're so different. And you know what? When you get behind the wheel, you can't help but act different too. The second you slip in behind the wheel, you're transformed into an international man of mystery. Someone who only gets his hands dirty, counting his winnings at the casino. A man who smashes crime syndicates in his spare time. In the era of the Allegro, there was a consortium of cool, and they called themselves the Coupés. Dusty Springfield and Sophia Loren were among the many glamour puss owners of 70s Super Coupes, and you really did need to be on big money to have bought one brand new. Today, though, their star has waned, eclipsed by more obvious 60s classics, and you can pick one up for a pittance. For modern motorists, the crudity of many a classic car can prove something of a culture shock. But even though this absolutely fabulous Lancia Gamma Coupe was born out of the mid-70s, it drives and feels as sophisticated as many a motor you'd find stood in a showroom today. It has a powerful 2.5-litre fuel injection engine with 140 brake horsepower, mated to a 5-speed transmission and disc brakes all round. But of course, it wasn't all good news. This is an Italian car from the 70s. So there are all manner of electrical and mechanical maladies. And then there was the rust. No, let's not even think about it. Of all the candidates for conversion to a two-door coupe, perhaps Peugeot's 504 saloon was the least likely. Its main attributes being its size, its strength and its bomb-proof durability. And whilst it is inescapably Italian in looks, Driving it reveals a temperament which is entirely Gallic. Its humble underpinnings engineered for straight-ahead stability, rather than brio through the bends. For a Fiat, the coupe is a big, big car, tipping the scales at over a ton and a half. And with an engine detuned for torque, performance can be best described as leisurely, which of course is entirely in character with the rest of the car. Still, shut your eyes for a moment, and dare I say it, you could imagine yourself cocooned inside the deep bottom drailon and fisheye aluminum interior of a Pontiac Trans Am. But the styling is much more Monaco than Michigan. Pure automotive architecture. And the interior doesn't disappoint either. From the panelled headlining to the crushed velour upholstery, it oozes casual opulence. And that sculptural gear selector really ought to be in a museum of modern art. For a car from a decade damned for its preoccupation with glam and flash, it's all delightfully subtle. But I sense there are still some of you entirely unconvinced by my arguments. You want wire wheels, leather seats, green paint. You like your classics curvier. But surely a classic should be defined by its qualities. It should be of the best. Fiat, Lancia and Peugeot were all big wealthy companies. These were their flagships and they really pushed the boat out. The exquisitely angular Fiat is easily my favourite. Perhaps too exotic for every day, parts can be impossible to find. And all three have a raging thirst for four star. If you're going to buy one, get a good one for around five grand because restoring one of these complex coupes could cost you your sanity. Thank you for watching. 
check out my channel for more old Top Gear videos and other content. Have a wonderful day.